The journey is almost over for our regular season, but we have one final match. And that match is currently the number one team in the league, the Cunninghams, versus the top of the freshman class, Team Fear. I'm excited, Randall. We've been looking forward to this matchup, and I don't know how it could go. It can go either way. I really think that Fear has a legitimate chance of winning here, just as much a chance as, well, you saw what happened with the Simp match. Cunningham's? I don't know, man. I, I don't know. <laughs> they could, will it go the way of Simp, a team that's been here a long time, and then falling to a newcomer? Will they learn from lessons of other teams that have fallen before them in these weeks coming up to this final battle? Anything is possible. We've loved hearing from you all season long. We want to continue to hear from you on Twitter at WGLNA. Facebook.com slash WGLNA as well. And if you're sending us a tweet, make sure to use that hashtag WGLNA. Plus, you can also find a lot of the VODs as well for these different battles and matches at YouTube.com slash WGLNA. And if you do want a replay, go to www fantasywgl.com and don't forget about our question of the day if you had to choose one person to be a guest caster who would you choose we've heard some really good answers i <laughs> yeah. think i think yeah. well, mark hamill's a good one william uh, shatner's a good one as well why no one has picked harrison ford i don't know it seems like it would make a lot of sense it's not too much of a long shot i mean we do live in the same city that he does we live in the same, same, same the area. same city that a lot of people live in <laughs> this is a very population dense pro uh, part of the United States. It is. It is indeed. Now, another beautiful city to live in is San Francisco. And we want to see you in San Francisco. And you have an opportunity to win a chance to visit us at the finals held at the Folsom Street Foundry. You can enter the tournament by going to worldoftanks.com, clicking the tournaments button, then clicking WGLNA, and you'll see the information here. It's a 3v3. Registration is open until February 19th, I believe, and the prize is airfare, hotel, and travel expenses all paid for for you and your two buddies, for you and your two teammates if you're able to win this tournament. We had another team win in the past, and they had a great time. Yes, and also don't forget that tournament Tier 7 Max with a Tier 6 limitation on light tanks. All right, we have our two team representatives standing by in the face-off. Gentlemen, good evening. Good evening. Good Let's evening. start with you Cunninghams. First of all, no matter what happens tonight, you're going to San Francisco. Congratulations. What does that mean to you and your team? Um, well, we're, we're kind of still processing that because we haven't actually played a game yet this week and we came into the week in second and now we're in first. So not quite sure how that happened, but um, we're, we're happy. We're excited. We're uh first seed. It's the it, First time that, that happened. So it seems like it's a strange feeling for you. Does or, or do you still feel like conflicted about being in first or something? Well, uh, if we'd beat Simp, we'd feel a little more like, ah, oh, yeah, we're first, but uh, we didn't. So. Uh. <laughs> All right. Well, you may have that uh, opportunity in San Francisco, yeah. but for this matchup tonight against Team Fear, I'm sure you've watched them with great interest so far as you prepared for this match. Uh, yeah, that, I mean, I, that's what my minions on my team do, and they just make a little summary for me. Uh, but yeah, no, they, they've looked, uh, like they can make some exciting games, so it should be fun. And, you know, uh, maybe we'll join them and, team, you know, if they beat us, we might, you know, try to get their sponsor too. <laughs> All right, let's check in with your opponents. We got Team Fear joining us. Fat Crow, you've got to be one happy man for how well your team has done this season. Uh, yeah, pretty decent. There was like a couple of slip ups. Obviously, we had a rough start, um, but we're looking good right now and it feels great. Now you have the playoffs to look forward to, to, to fight through another stage before you guys have a chance to make it to San Francisco. Will you turn up the heat in terms of practice time and commitment for this upcoming week? Or are you not going to really change anything? You guys are on a, a really good streak right now. Uh, well, we did, there's always uh, work to do, but we definitely want to put uh, a lot more effort for uh, the playoffs. So we're going to be working on all of that. Any for words? Sure. Any words for your opponents tonight, Fat Crub? Uh, just good luck and have fun. <laughs> all right, very well mannered. A hey, Martin. Mm, eh, just uh, good luck and um, hope to see you in San Fran. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Good luck. 
We'll see you on the Canadian battlefield. Thanks. Both guys from Canada, in case you didn't know. A huge shout-out to Canada. We have a lot of fans and a lot of players from our allies to the north. Hey, A. Yeah. All right. right. So, throw, like, you throw A on the end of it, and it becomes Canadian, right? Mostly. Mostly. What? How do you make it fully Canadian? I don't know. We'll have to ask our resident Canadian, Ken, who works in our office. Yeah, but he's like a weird Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Team Fear, top of the freshman class, had a tough tiebreaker loss against I Love Lamp on Tuesday. And Cunningham's what they meant of they haven't played any matches this week is because timed out forfeited their match against them. Well, this is the last time you're going to have to place bets for the regular season. I'm pretty sure we're going to have betting in the playoffs and the finals as well. But make sure to place your bets at the beginning of every single battle. If you need any help, ask the people in chat. Bad Co, Earwax, and the other moderators are there standing by to help you out. You can also also go to WGLConnect.com to check to see how well you're doing when it comes to the points because the top point owners have an opportunity to take home a nice little prize. Yes, of course. Now, let's get to right down to it. Cliff will be battle number one. Cliff is a map we don't get to see a lot of. It is not a map where... I, I feel like the Cunninghams or Fear really want to go to. Why would you go to a map that feels so coin flippy? Like T49s dictate what's going to go down, how this can go. Now, with players like Commander J running around, Dodoma in 1390s, you, you may have a you, you may have to give an edge to Cunninghams. I feel like they, they have really good light players, but Fear, uh, Fear... Fear still has people like Chandog and External, and if they show up on the battlefield, then... And it's, it's just so hard to judge at this point. I think T49s. The only thing we can do is watch it unfold before us. It is time, folks, for the final battle, the final match, the first battle for our regular season. The Cunninghams versus Fear on Cliff. Randall, what do we have for Tinks? All right, well, the Cunninghams, who are going to be the red team attacking to start this, are going to be in a 1390. Three are U251s, T49, just one of them, and two M41 Walker Bulldogs. So very standard kind of a strategy, whereas Fear looks like they're going to alter it slightly. They're going to do a T69, so actual medium tank, two 1390s, and then a single RU251, a T49, and two M41 Walker Bulldogs. So a, a sl only slightly more hit points, only very little difference in that respect, which I don't think will make a huge difference, but we do have an engagement. A. Martin, in his attempt to get to the mid, has been caught out by Shinma, External, and Warbander. He's taking a lot of damage and trying to deal as much as he can in the meantime, but he goes down. And that is a very early pickup and huge for Fear to start off the series. Chandog tried to fire a shot against Germ, did not connect, but Germ takes down External 007. Makos takes a hit as he crosses the open plains, and Commander J hits another shot against Fat Crobe as he continues to try to move, but Fat Crobe is getting obliterated. He still has enough life left in him and four shots to do some damage against the Cunninghams and Comps takes a hit for 287 as Fat Probe's still looking for that opening. He sees it against Commander J, but Commander J has one more shot to destroy Fat Probe and he gets it. All right, and then and if you take a look at the hit points right now, you're seeing definitely in the favor of the Cunninghams. Shinma has been cornered, being chased down by Trireme, who's firing HE by the way. Smart play if you want to take against uh, Ooh, light double shots against Chandog and Shinma. Only one tank remains for Fear. Cunningham's looks great, and they sealed the deal for battle number one. Wow, what really great job by the Cunningham's. That just, was just quick. Just boom, 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 boom. Got him, man. Yeah. That's what I saw. It was a whirlwind of activity. I, I mean, the Cunningham's take a brutal hit to start the match, right? They're going around the corner, sending M41s to, to go take the middle, that kind of a deal. Trireem and A. Martin thinking that they'll be able to make it there, probably not going to run into anything. But it turns out that Fear tries to start this one off by catching those tanks out. But they may have thrown too many resources in that direction, and because of that, the Cunninghams are able to dominate in the middle of the map. They easily overmatch. They are able to reply also to, to being overmatched in the West by throwing Germ and Militant 83 at the problem, who very quickly deal with it. It, it it was a good recovery. I have to give Very it to good. the Cunninghams. They, I didn't expect them to be able to do that. I thought Fear's attack or the surprise of catching those tanks out would be enough to the point where it would go a little one-sided. Yeah. They gave him the slip. They gave him the slip, and it yeah. totally worked. But now Fear is going to be very... Uh, cognizant and be able to recognize that, perhaps, in battle number two as we're getting ready here. Uh, the T-49 shots, I mean, especially with the almost internal battle between those little tanks on top of the lighthouse that we'll see, or at least the the 
placement of tanks are trying to fight over that spot. Sometimes it dictates what's happening in the rest of the battle, and sometimes these tankers completely ignore that section of the map. Yeah, it sometimes it, yeah, you're right. It never comes into play about maybe like 25% of the time. You you won't see a tank over there. Yep. It'll all happen in the middle or something. But by the way, before we get into the next battle, Elevate Noble, I believe it's at a 2-0 in favor of Elevate right now. So we'll keep you updated on those scores. All right, battle number two between Cunningham's and Fear Cunningham's is up one to zero. Randall, what do we have for tanks? Well, looks like we've got a 1390 3RUs, T49, and two M41s for the Cunningham, same strat. On the other side, Fear's actually bringing a heavier lineup. Pershing T69, 1390, RU251, T49, two M41s. So instead of having two 1390s like last time, they're going to just change that to a Pershing. So I don't know what Fear's trying to solve with this, what they're trying to accomplish by, by changing that up. Now, they will s alter their opening strategy. We've got Warbender alone going to the far side of the map. A Martin and Trirune playing a safer, more conservative opening than a Martin is covering where Warbender currently is and allows Trireme to safely get All into right. the high ground. Here's Fosta Kid. And that high ground will be in control of the Cunninghams. Oh, until Dodoma takes a shot for 325 from behind. Ouch. And, oh, and another one for 247. Yeah, Chandog from way across the map has been able to get some connections, but he does take some damage himself. Dodoma able to get some spotting. Militant 83 as well. And now Dodoma's optics are repaired. He can uh, continue spotting as he would like. However, I should remind everyone that all pro players play with perfect accounts. And what I mean by that is their crews have every unlocked skill, meaning that they have... Fossa can hit for 234. Yeah. They, they can choose any equipment. They have so, all all the perks, all the crew skills unlocked for all their crew members. Exactly. So they're, they're playing at the top premium, the top tanks. And, and it's really the only way to guarantee that everyone's on that even footing. Yes. And it and it gives these guys more tools to work with. You can do some amazing things with a 1390 with a perfect crew. You can do some amazing things with a T-49, but these guys still are able to do that on on their normal accounts, and you see that all the time. You can see that in their, their, their records. There's nothing that can replace player skill. Yes. And even though those perfect crews and per perfect tanks can heighten and amplify or work together with that skill. I mean, in the end, it has to come down to tactics and making your shots count. It's usually what does it. Opening those windows. Four minutes and 50 seconds, A. Martin's hit from a distance at 147. Fear is showing a little bit of uh, of their teeth here in this matchup, but the Doma's still in a safe place, and that's really the only recognizable advantage that the Cunninghams has. He's got a slightly higher position, which is nice for him. Comps being on the high ground is great. If they can continue using him to deal damage, it's phenomenal. Fossa Kid takes a big hit for 355. All right, and Comps lining up for one more onto external. Although it looks like he's not able to find a connecting shell. And what is he? He's looking back to the east for a moment. I thought there would be a tank. Apparently not. Still trying to measure up and find those tanks. Fear is defending, so it's up to Cunningham's to break through this. And we're seeing some movement from Militant and A. Martin over on the one line. Yeah, they're they're heading up, trying to find some tanks to put a crossfire on. Maybe try and connect with Fat Crow or Chandog. But they're a little distant. And, oh, Warbander. Warbander's on the low ground. So with Makos and Fat Crow, they're moving in there, which means they could catch out A. Martin and Militant. That that could really work against the Cunninghams if the Cunninghams take advantage of the fact that they are overmatched right yeah. now. Well, they take they, down Warbanner, though, and A. Martin's going to be on the reload. This is going to be a fight between Makos and Militant 83. Makos crosses through. He gets tracked. Beautiful shot by Militant. A. Martin's still on the reload. Makos continues to push forward through the cover. And I'm waiting for the push from the Cunninghams. They need to recognize how many tanks are down below and take out Fosticate, move on to Shinma, and then have that high ground advantage where they can tear apart the remainder of fear, but it's not happening yet. They're Big hesitating. shot from Fat Crow, though, against Milton 83. He barely gets behind cover, and Trium's going to try to push in to do a little bit of damage. A. Martin guards against Makos, and now a significant damage is being done against Fear, but the rest of the Cunninghams are still taking a while to clean up the other side of the map and then move against. They've just moved. They fear. just now realize exactly what the situation they're in, and Commander J is moving forward. They're moving on to Shinma. Germ from the other side, he doesn't really have an escape. Commander J, unfortunately, misses a, a shell. He could have 
done well to connect, but on the move 1390, I'll give it to him. Yeah. Now, who looking, takes out Shinma? Exactly. Having these positions, Cunningham's control of the East Cap, Fear is going to have to reclaim it. Comps, I think, is the most important tank for Cunningham's right now. If this were a T49, it would be a potentially very devastating situation, but it, I think we can make an argument for the RU being up here. Fast fire rate, good penetration, the ability to continually engage against tanks and deal more damage on their way here, and some, of course, better accuracy. I mean, also, I guess the convenience of him already having been on top of the lighthouse is, is most of the reasons up there. <laughs> it, like honestly, that's probably yeah. it. He was up yeah. there, so he's staying up there. It's it's not a probably that complex. Well, Cunninghams are playing this very smartly, though, at least for map for for this map, is because they're forcing fear to come to them in the center. Comps has that high ground, and that's all fear can do. They have 11 seconds to move in and get a reset, and Cunninghams has got to land their shots correctly. They got to punish him. They also have to share some of that HP with Dodoma. German Dodoma now get reset. Dodoma gets hit and taken out. They were unfortunately weren't moving. They're staying in one spot, but that yeah. allows them shell. to get more accuracy when they fire back. One more shell into Fat Crow, but Chandog has moved in on German. They're going to be able to 1v1. Chandog should be able to take down Germ. One mm. more shot. And Chandog... Oh, it's a low roll. He doesn't get the... He doesn't get it. Oh, He's on reload. Ger and both of them are on reload right now. Comps is up top, and Germ gets a kill on Chandog. And he's just so incredibly low right now. That's... That's game changing. If he was able to kill Germ, he could have escaped and, and been able to do something from there. But now, Germ is sitting at 13 hit points, and one low roll is the difference between him being able to put pressure on Cap and what we're looking at right now. Bounce! Comps. A bounce! Comps against External 007. External's going to be ready for him. And another bounce from Comps. External able to hold. 44 seconds left on the battle clock. Comps looks for it. He gets it. A penetration shot, one more shot, and external will fall. And another bounce! The power of the Pershing. The face hugging. It's too strong. It's okay. Com Finally, Comps is able to get it, but most of his health was destroyed in that engagement. Germ on the move. I think they know where Makos is. They have a good idea, but they have only 20 seconds 20 to get there. 20 seconds to move as quickly as you can. The RU 251s are the perfect tank to move quickly, but Makos, oh man, Germ is up front. 12 seconds left. No, Germ's going the wrong way. It's going the wrong way. They're not going to make it. No. Nope. It's behind a rock, too. They can't make the shot. Two. One. Uh, shot on the move. And no. they can't get it. A sliver of health allows Team Fear to take the victory in battle, two, tying up the series one to one. Cunning was able to win the battle. But, Randall, you, you saw it coming because of what was happening on the one line. The Cunninghams took a little bit of time, a little bit of hesitation to overmatch on the other side of the I, map. Yeah, that was it. I, I, They didn't get the spotting. I can give them that. But, oh, man, if they had known how many tanks were coming down here. They killed one. Then they meet well, two. Well, they, they see all then, four. They, only now, only just at three minutes and ten seconds do they realize what's going on. Then they move. And it takes only a few moments for them to realize this, but they lacked all of that information, I think, that we had. I didn't see spotting indicators. And it's frustrating, isn't it, to, to see the lack of pressure coming from the north onto the tanks of the cliff, and then to watch Cunningham start to figure it out. And it always takes that little bit longer, because it's not, it's, it's tanks not it's, firing at yeah, you, you as to... opposed to a situation where you've actually discovered them. You have to have a preemptive almost instinctual feeling to make that call, but it does happen. It doesn't happen often where you start moving in, you go, oh, they're, they're coming towards us because we spot one other tank moving towards us. And that's where you have to kind of take the risk yeah. and make the call of go, push the other side. And then if you're right, great, awesome. If you're wrong, crap. But it's that type of instinctual call that you have to make as a caller, as a commander. I mean, it's I, I don't think if I were in that situation, I would have made a better call. All sure. that much sooner. Sure. So and again, and, and I'm not have, trying to say that I'm we have better or anything, but a complete bird's eye view mm -hmm. of all this stuff too. We're going to see information and be able to process information faster than the tankers on the ground. This is the nature of us as the commentators having the viewpoint that we do. Mm -hmm. But even then, you have to have a tactical awareness, a situational awareness of what's happening on the battlefield to be able to make those calls in a split second decision. I mean, most it is players not easy. Yeah, most players can barely track more than f like four or five objects going on, but then these guys are having to track far more than that, what's going on their entire team, all of the enemy, and what's happening on the battlefield.
All right, battle number three in the tied-up series of the Cunninghams versus Sphere on Cliff. What do we have for tanks? Well, we have a 1390, three RU251s, T49, and two M41s for the Cunninghams, the red team on defense. Fear, two 1390s, two RU251s, T49, two M41 Walker Bulldogs. So it's, it's a very standard one, slight variation in more burst for Fear, but more consistent fire for the Cunninghams, so it shouldn't even out to, to much of, of anything, really. I don't expect there to be huge advantages based on tank choices. I think it'll be a, a mid game where you see both teams meeting in the mid. T49s are going to blow stuff up, and it's whoever has the better blow up stuff T49. Right? <laughs> sure. Oh, comps. That comps might blow. Comps! Oh, hit for 233. He hits Fat Crobe as well. And Warband is going to get in the mix. Oh, He's but going to absorb some shots, though. A lot of damage. 782. One more good shell and should finish him. And Comps is down. Foster Kid gets a hit. He poked out and he falls back away from Germ. Commander J is at a half health. Cunninghams are starting to be peeled apart here by fear, but they have to continue the momentum against Trireme and the rest of these tanks as the Cunninghams are looking for openings. Militant is one of them. And Dodoma is loaded. He's ready. He's looking for a shot. If he can find someone. I think you can wipe someone off the battlefield very quickly. Commander J is about one shot away. Although Chandog is a is a serious threat and needs to be dealt with. Dodoma can't afford to take a shell to the back of the turret from Chandog. That's a good chance of an ammo rack, really. Although if he can get a free shell out without Chandog returning, it would be fine. Although A. Martin, other side of the map, finishes off Meadowhawk. And that's going to be the west side going to the Cunninghams and a lot of control with that. Also control. Uh, Tempo-wise, they can dictate a lot to Fear, who's going to have to change things up in order to try and stay relevant or try, or get back into that position where they dictate and force the Cunninghams to react. Well, Fear may be taking a page out of I Love Lamp's book here as we see three tanks heading towards the east side. Tadoma looks for Chandog in the meantime, although we have a lot of spotting occurring at the same time. Warbanders on reload, Fat Crow. They're all very low, and Dodoma could very easily remove any of these tanks from the battlefield with the exception of Chandog, which is a really tough problem for Dodoma to try to solve because he doesn't have the ability to bring in much support. Everyone else is going to have to deal with, well, this this hit, this attack force. Foster Kid's in trouble. He's taking a lot of shots coming from the Cunninghams, and he goes down. Trireme gets a kill. External misses a shot against Trireme as he pushed forward, but with the amount of hit point damage, the RU-251 can do. He'll take down Trireme, but he will he will pay for it. And he gets the kill. Here comes Militant 83, though, at full health. Chandog takes down Dodoma. And Fear is now pushing across the center section. External is still in trouble. Militant takes a nice shot coming from Makos. External ah, lives. Can he get another shot on Militant as Makos is moving up to get the kill on External? Or on Militant 83, excuse me. He gets one shot. And a second shot from external, and they take him down. One tank remains for the Cunninghams. Four remain for Fear. And is there a captain? Fear's going to clean it up. Oh, Chandog. This is cruel. Oof. A little bit of overkill, but I like it coming from Chandog. And now Team Fear leads the series 2-1 to one against the Cunninghams. That, that deep strike that they pulled out, just out of nowhere, just says... Let's take three tanks that are reasonably healthy, send them into the backfield, see what they can do. Foster Kid, got to give him credit for taking out Commander J. Commander J is very low, easy target, but it's also very easy as a player to not notice that he is the easiest target and that you reasonably can get the kill. And that's something else, you know, closer or maybe to the southwest on backside of the lighthouse isn't something you would want to go for instead. Good tar target uh, acquisition, prioritization, and of course making the shot count. So I give him credit a lot in that attack, taking down a crucial tank. Behind that, Dodoma not getting a, a huge kill because in this battle, he does 441 damage. The whole purpose of a T-49, as we know, is to just wipe a tank off the battlefield, hit it for a thousand something, someone else can finish him off with the rest of the damage. And that's all you need, and that'll throw everything off. But you can see Dodoma gets 441, and then Chandog gets 888, also not as great as you want out of a T49, but it's that one's a little bit more like, okay, you did okay, you didn't do fantastic, that's passable. Yeah. yeah. It's passable. Passable. As we move into battle number four, the final battle for Cliff, Fear is up 
And if they're able to get another back, uh, victory here, they will take quite a significant lead moving into Prohorovka, where they will be on the defense. Cunninghams will be on the attack. What do we have for tanks, Randall? All right, for tanks, we have a 1390, three RU251s, T49, two M41 Walker Bulldogs for the Cunningham. So the same lineup they brought last battle. And then Fear will do the same thing they did last battle as well with the two 1390s, two RU251s, T49, and the M41 Walker Bulldogs. So it's, it's all about the execution. You can tell the Cunninghams, no, they could have won. They could have dealt with what Fear threw at them. But it was their fault. They're, I think they're accepting that, and they're willing to go on and make the same lineup, just do it better. They had some nice things go for them, too. A Martin in the West getting early pickups, kills. That should have been the kind of move that the Cunninghams can come off of and win. But Fear is able to prove that it even down a tank, you can do plenty of work. Now, this opening move, Dodoma's going to go to the middle, which I worry because oh, he's taken. Oh, yeah. External 007, 619. Beautiful from around the corner. Fired back from Chandog. Dodoma can't get the shot. That is why I was afraid for him. That is exactly it. And that hurts. <laughs> that hurts a lot. Well, external says shaken, not stirred as he pulls away from that shot. Chandog's going to push forward for 473. The power of the T49 is strong with Team Fear. And they're going to push up against the weakened Cunninghams and get behind Militant 83 and around Commander J. Yeah, and now Chandog's going to be able to just roll in and once he's loaded, maybe even deal with uh, deal with Militant as he would please. Everyone's just going to start going down. I don't think there's really a reasonable fight oh, for the Cunningham. Oh, Chandog missed! He missed a shot against Militant 83. He, he got a little excited. Uh, yeah. He's got to be careful. Militant's one shot away from falling, though. Or Banner from a distance trying to get it. Chandog just bouncing around. Running around this little mountaintop here. Militant fires in a war banner for 215, though. Chandog tries to hit a Martin, and that shot misses as well. Oh, beautiful HE shell from Comps. Wait, wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are we. Okay. War banner well, finally I... takes down Militant. There are three tanks still alive for the Cunninghams. This shouldn't actually be happening yes, right there now. Yes, there are. There the... are. Because the fear was. They... <laughs> the tank that was still left alive was still doing significant damage from the Cunninghams yeah. on top of that mountain. <sighs> I. Okay, I'll give it to him, but that shouldn't have happened. It, Fear should no. not allow that to happen. Well, Fosta Kid is waiting to get reloaded here until he pushes up against comps. But, oh, geez, Fosta, be careful. <laughs> I mean, he goes right into the lion's den. Comps is waiting for him. Now he's going to push up with all six of his shots. Comps, now Cunningham, they, they can still hold out here as a defense. Well, there goes a Martin. No, uh, no I'm going to give them no, but they. I was surprised that there were still eight Cunningham's tanks alive because they should have been dead sooner. Yes. That's really what I was trying to For say. For sure. Trireme's it, last one alive here. Yeah, they, they couldn't reasonably probably still win with those tanks alive because of positional, the, the position fear really destroying the Cunninghams this time. Absolutely tearing them apart. The opening move when they lose the T49 to Doma, teams rely on T49s, and I brought this one up last time, but yeah. they really do rely on the T49 to deal damage because when your T49 fails to deal damage, you have failed. You have but failed that because tank selection has failed. Be, well, it's it's because Chandog in his T49 is going to be able to deal significant damage. If I go take a look at what Chandog is able to do, it's 856 this time. Again, passable because guess what? The rest of Fear just rolls on over. Fosta Kid does 2,000 damage. Makos is right behind him at 1,980. The Cunninghams are, are really not not bringing some crucial elements that Fear seems to be able to. Fear is being decisive enough when they need to. They're catching the right tanks and focusing well. Making their shots count is huge. It's just, unfortunately, I think the Cunninghams are, are taking some risks here, or in their little things in their play well, style. I, well, I think Fear is taking a risk, and it's paying off for them right now. But that's what you do. You yeah. take calculated risks. You realize, all right, I can afford to lose some hit points to kill this T-49 who's already missed his shell. He's loading. I've got the angle. Let's all just peek up. I can afford to take one, maybe two shells. This is a kill. This is a this is a crucial tank off the battlefield, one that is significant in its ability to swing a match from a huge deficit in tanks and hit points to right to even to way in your favor. That's a T49. It It's just awesome dice roll thing. It's a great tank when it works <laughs> kind of thing. But it has to be that quick moving, which it is, run and gun, get into their face, fire the shot, which they did against the Doma. That's how you play it, and that's why it's used so much here on Cliff. Now we move to Prohorovka.
which will be just as much fun. The Cunningham's yeah. light lineups, maybe some T32s in the mix. Doubtful for Artie? Your thoughts? Uh, from Cunningham's at this time, so. yeah. Well, also because of the nature of the attack. You know what? I mean, it, I, I, I would I would do it. I would do it for Battle 1 because it's still that small measure of no, we can be slightly experimental. Well, remember when Battle the Cunninghams five. brought uh, Sand River, they brought the Lorraine? Yes. And that didn't work out yes, for them? Yes, 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 yes. I think they're scarred for life. I don't think they want Artie anymore. Oh, yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> that was I'm very so painful sorry, for them in the tiebreaker. I'm really sorry. Uh, that was a bygone era. Here we go. Battle number five, Cunningham's and Fear. Fear is up three to Cunningham's one point on the scoreboard. What do we have for tanks, Randall? Well, the Cunningham's, the red team def attacking, will have a T32, a T69, 1390, three RU251s, and a 5916. Mobile, but with a nice T69 to support Militant and his T32. Fear will be bringing two T32s, two 1390s, RU251, and two M41 Walker Bulldogs with plenty of burst, right in there with consistent fire T32s and an RU251. And right off the bat, Germ is going to go up the middle for his scout run. Commander J appears to be going for one, but uh, it'll be uh, a slightly to the east to verify the safety of... No, maybe he's altering it. No, he's not going to go east. He's going to make a west loop. They found Warbander. Shots fired. Yes, connection for 215 on the opening scout run. This, these are the advantages of bringing a, a high mobility lineup with RUs. You can make an opening scout run that's this aggressive and really take control of half of the map in the first minute. Whereas your opponent can't send tanks there and deal damage. They send tanks there and they take damage. And then from this, east side for the Cunninghams. And we see North placement coming from Team Fear with Makos, Fostikin, and Chandog. And as the defenders, they will sit and wait for the Cunninghams to make their opening move. And they're going to do so, it looks like, on that eastern side on that fly cap, which is smart because the majority of Team Fear on the opposite side of the map. Ah, look at this. Meadowhawk firing into tanks. Comps into comps. He's getting one connection, but no more yet. Ah, there it is. Second one into comps for one. But... Now, Meadowhawk is going to start taking damage. He spotted 229. Commander J makes a connection. And Meadowhawk, actually, he, he stays. He's he, not spotted for now. I think that's actually blind fire that's hitting him. He's got three shells left to get those resets, but he's waiting for the rest of Team Fear to move up. Fear is going to have to get a reset. And, well, no, tanks are leaving the flag cap now as they're moving to engage upon Team Fear coming up towards them. They're going to overmatch that shot. south group. They want to get it down. After that, I think back off and take maybe the west side of the map. They've got, they've realized that that Meadowhawk is over there. This is a bad idea. They can't succeed at cap at all. Yeah, this is just not going to work. Now, Commander J, that's odd that he's not being dealt with very much. As Mako's Foster Kid and Warbander were, were pulled away. They are going to take him down. But how is that going to help the fight in the south? Chandog getting unloaded upon in that 1390. He needs to stay alive to get those three shots out, but Comp stops him. Militant 83 and comps have taken significant damage and Foster Kid beautiful shot right over the hole of Fat Crow but they take down Militant 83 that's three tanks down for the Cunninghams only one for Fear now Fear has lost significant hit points for these T32s but look at Germ and Trireme taking hits from these T32s as they move back these four tanks from the Cunninghams are huddled together. Makos, Fostikid, and the rest of, of Team Fear should be heading down to the south to help these two T-32s. I mean, they, they should, but they've already done enough helping. I mean, damage dealt, 311, well, Meadowhawk, 503. Kid was on the reload, makes sense. Kid's an 874 so far, and Mako's 879, significant damage. Not a huge, overwhelming amount, but they were supporting that fight the entire time. They couldn't, they just didn't want to move. They didn't want to have a moment when they couldn't have a perfectly aimed shot. Well, Dodoma gets hit from a distance. And now Team Fear has great map control on the eastern side. Ah, uh, but German A. Martin. This is a part where I think we could see the Cunninghams try and bring something back. Meadowhawk Warbender moving to the south. If A. Martin had not just peeked over, we could have seen Meadowhawk go up and over. And then a trap sprung. But... Oh, Meadowhawk moved just in time to dodge the shot coming from either Trireme or Dodoma. Yeah, the Cunningham nice tried to play. A Martin tried to find out what was going on. Unfortunately, I think it would have done him more, more good if if Meadowhawk had gone up and over without knowing that they were there, because it would have been just such a great trap where he's not expecting to have Ooh, to back up. Great shot again coming from the north side from from Fear from Meadowhawk and Warbanner's position. 
And now the... Dodoma is moving in, though. So Slowly tanks in the north, Makos tries. external, could be engaged upon by Dodoma alone, I think. Oh, but a bounce from external. If they can take down that T-32, that's fantastic for the Cunninghams. I think they can bring this one back if they can accomplish just that, but they are having trouble getting that. Here comes Foss the kid. He's getting the up and over. He takes a little bit of a hit. And he gets the kill. A. Martin's going to try to push in to get a couple shots, but Meadowhawk and Foster Kid are ready for him. That's two tanks down, even more for the Cunninghams. And a nice shot from Foster Kid. Look at that long range against Trireme. Yeah, and, and now 1390. It, it's over this Oh, point. another one, 253. The moment he peeks up, he walked right into it. And now Dodoma, Trireme, it's, it's only really a matter of time. This is a point where the Cunninghams have to try and re think about what they're going to do next battle and not focus nearly as much right now on, on the present battle because it's over. Fear takes it as the defenders. They have one more battle to go until they are able to defeat Cunningham. It's the number one team in our standings right now. This is big for Team Fear. They could do it against Simp. They could do it against Cunningham's. They could do it against anybody as they move on to the playoffs, yeah, no matter what happens at the end of this, yeah, this series. This validates everything for them, beating yeah. the Cunningham's, because Simp is already established as, was established as a top team. Right now, they're seeing the struggle, but teams like Fear, and I love land defeating them, but then also moving on to defeat a team like the Cunninghams. It's it's not a fluke. You can't make that excuse anymore. You can't say it wasn't it was a fluke or or make excuses. They're beating teams now that are traditionally at the top. Teams that have been the first, the second. Things that teams that at the beginning of the season, if you asked either of us, I think you could have easily gotten an answer, which would have been simp then the Cunninghams, right there at first and second. I know, I know, I would with bet possibly on them. hammer time. You know, maybe moving into the mix, but yeah, something like that. Predictably, yeah, based on experience for those teams. But <laughs> the first tiebreaker series, that's yeah. simp lost against timed out. I mean, what was going through our minds at the time was what is happening? This is not correct, and we don't mean that timed out didn't deserve it, but just the. The impact of what was happening and then the continual downfall of Simp right now. It's, 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 it's because they stood at like the highest point of any team. It's not an upset yeah. where and it's And Timed Out was at the lowest point. Yes. The lowest point of all our teams at and, the time. But now we've got teams like Fear who, who for some reason, it took them until after some about midseason to where we would really notice their performance. But these teams are, are replacing teams like Simp and, and teams like Cunningham's and really showing them that, wow, we are... Impressive. Battle number six. Fear is one point away from taking the series as we still continue the fight on Prohorovka. What do we have for tanks? Real quickly, Randall. All right, with T32, T69, 1390, two RE251s, two M41 Walker Bulldogs for the Cunninghams on their attack run. Two T32s, two 1390s, RE251, two M41 Walker Bulldogs for Fear as they make their northwestern approach. Well done. And we see that north side again, covered by fear as they wait for the Cunninghams to come to them. War Banner's taking significant hits, so War Banner, get out of there! He's okay. He gets, he gets into the defilade, hides behind the T-32s. So pay attention to Fat Crow and to War Banner and their approach. They go west, then they go north. Most teams to counter out T-32s will be looking along the five line. This is an, uh, a, an un uncommon approach. And so external and Fat Crow don't get discovered because in order for them to be engaged upon, the opponent has to come into the enemy's side of the map, like way into the enemy's side of the map. You have to cross the Echo, you have to cross into Echo 3 in order to get sh clean shots onto those T-32s. So I like the way Fear is using their T-32s and the way they go about taking the middle without taking a lot of damage. It's, it's, a, it's a good variation upon a, a theme that's been established to work on this map. And now we do have a little bit of play, though. The Cunninghams appear to be trying to get something from Fat Crobe and from External. Just one good shell here or there, something, is, is what they're searching for. And they are getting one connection, 314 into External. Oh, Chandog takes a hit for 251. Commander J is hit as well. And Team Fear has sent their northern tanks over into the north side of the train tracks as the firefighting continues and Chandog's the first tank to go yeah, down. I don't know what's going on right there. Now, A. Martin is on fire, does not have the fire extinguisher, but firefighting skill. And what was that? Chandog just goes right down the 2-3 line. I have no idea why Chandog even did that as a defender from Team Fear. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, Militant hit from long range. Did he hit R three times and forget? <laughs> Maybe. Mm. There's no reason. It's 
It's it's no reason to be playing this. Uh, I mean, you're sitting there on your win over the Cunninghams. You're about to do a five-one win and just man, you lose a little focus. No, never do that ever. It, it, you'll you'll you will regret it for the rest of your life. And there goes external. Milton gets that kill. It's two tanks down for Fears. They're starting to crumble. All right, the Cunninghams are starting to see success. The, yeah, and, you're, and this is Fear not making the plays that we're used to them making. This is them kind of throwing away a tank, not knowing the information that they need to know. And then on top of that, now they've got T-32s that I assumed were going to be in the right position, not. And there goes Fat Crow, three tanks down. And now we've got a counter push. Meadowhawk, Fosta Kid trying to lead the way, but... It's too spread out. Fosta Kid and Meadowhawk are out alone where the rest of the light tanks are still trying to catch up. Now, down goes Fosta Kid. Mako's Warbender, they're, they're 50 meters behind. This Meadowhawk's gonna be left out alone. What are you gonna try to do here? Yeah, Cunningham's gonna clean the rest of this up. Makos is the only tank that hasn't taken any, well, I just take that back now. He took a shot. You take that back. Well, they take down two tanks still coming from Cunningham's. With three minutes and 42 seconds, the attackers definitely have this. There are two remaining tanks from the other side of the railroad tracks. What is this? Fires everywhere. Everyone's on fire. Sorry. There's Makos, and he is gone, and that's it. Cunningham's puts a point on the board. And unfortunately for Team Fear, they're going to have to switch to the attack, where Cunningham's will defend. I think uh, that's where the Cunningham's ring this one back. That was utterly disappointing, coming from Team Fear. Really? I'm going to lay it on the line, guys. What were you doing? Um, I don't even know how to call that. I'm, you know, that's, I think that's one of the ones where you uh, go back yeah. and you talk to the team and you say, what was that? And they say, yeah, it was actually the stupid mistake that we made. Yeah. And we actually just really messed up. That's what it comes chucked down to. There's no chucked, down. Chuck, chuck down, chucked up to. Shinma's, chuck. Chinma, Shinma's name is Chuck. Yeah. So so I can see where you're going with yeah. that. I was, trying, I was trying to hit it just right. But yeah. the thing is, there are times in our lives that we make mistakes. <laughs> and that was one of them for Team Fear, that there's no explanation. It was simply, wow, I hope I never do that ever again. The way that was phrased, it was like, thanks, Uncle Josh. Yeah, I know. I it's, know, guys. But uh, it's just... Yeah, it, I know. Well, you have, the only thing to do is just brush it off and move on as we move into the next battle. Now that Team Fear has to attack against the Cunninghams, this is kind of the principle that they love to attach themselves to of, oh, well, we'll lose as attackers anyways, and then we're going to win as defenders. That's a, not necessarily the, the mindset they have every single battle, every single match, but Team Free has to battle against that, and yeah, it's it, going to be a tough battle. It's clear that the Cunninghams have a, a bit of a bias towards defense. They like defending. They're very good at it, too. you got to give that to them. I think so, at least. They usually do well. Yeah. Cliff, I think, is an example of them just... Really not being prepared for the map. Yeah. I think they weren't prepared. I don't think Dodomo was prepared for that little, hey, how you doing? So oh, no, no, no. 600 damage to the front of your tank. I, I think not you should fun. have seen it coming, though, when you go into a position so exposed. But that's that's in the past. We're about to get into a place where the Cunninghams can, can start to bring this map yes, back can. to yes, their control, back into their momentum. Now, the best they can do is a tiebreaker. Of course. Even though it would you know be significant for them to get it. Mm -hmm. Um this is more for fear, for Team Fear's placement in playoffs. This is what they're fighting for. Cunningham's, nothing happens really, win or lose, except pride and I, a little bit of momentum being lost. I think beating in. fear, though, would, would mean a lot because of the way yeah. fear's been performing. Just saying, I'm just saying this, what happens in San Francisco when it comes to, um, to which team's going to be joining us. Cunningham's going to be there automatically. All right. Battle number seven. Randall, what do we have for tanks? We have two T-32s, 1390, three RU-251s, 59-16. That's the Cunningham's defense. Attacking, Fear, T-32, Pershing, two 1390s, RU-251, two M41 Walker Bulldogs. So, the opening move, Cunningham's, well, I believe everyone can see it very clearly, which is forward is the best direction, even a Martin's going up and over to the middle. This is very much like the, the simple tanker strategy we've seen before, what timed out pulled against Simp, for example. A lot of teams have adopted this strategy as a way to take control very early on, and also to safely get your T-32s to the middle, because militant and comps, if you hide behind them, militant and comps get torn apart from range, and you can't guarantee your your sh your shots are going to hit at 500 meters. RNG, uh, just the fact that your shells drop, all of these little factors, the fact that they move and your shells don't travel quite fast enough to the point where they might be in the same spot as <laughs> when you fired. So all these little factors in, it's better to lead the way and screen right. for your battle buddies as opposed to leave them out to die. Oh, Fossa Kid's up, up top, up at a tip at the top. Metal Hawk is on the flag cap. Militant 83 fires towards Metal Hawk, does not connect. Fossa Kid's gonna go, hey, I see a Militant. Shaking that T-32 right now, but we're going to get involved in a second here. 
He's just shaking back and forth. Nice little. He's just shaking it track off. Track damage. Is that is that what no, we're going he, he was just he was ba you know dancing kind of back and forth. Nice little hit coming from Fossa Kid. Fat Grove's gonna move up. I'm trying to see where that pen. Did that hit the shot trap? No, I think it was a maybe a track pen. Oh, here comes Fat track. Crobe. Ah, okay. Now T32 versus Pershing, and I think Fat Crobe has a better angle. I think Militant's on a bit more of a, yeah, a steeper, a steeper, slope. steeper climb. Yeah, so so it's a little more annoying for him to deal with this situation. But he doesn't have to worry about Artie, so he could uh, approach this from from perhaps straight on. But with the overmatch that's getting ready to happen here from Fear, uh, Militant might go down very quickly. But notice that uh, Commander J is on the approach. We have Dodoma very close by. Yeah, he, and Dodoma's ready for it as well. He's ready for that up and over in the north. They're they're very well prepared. And then wait, is they even they even have conflict in the back here? So Cunningham's have very deep coverage right now. They're prepared for the up and over. They're prepared to support multiple angles. Conflict can help both comps and other members of his team. I like that also. Comps is getting good connections onto members of Fear. He's hit Meadowhawk. Got hits on the Chan Dog, and there, Meadowhawk's even down. It's great for the Cunninghams. They've lost minimal health. Only the T32s, the guys that are meant to, have lost them, and that's going to be the cue for Fear to start the fight. Militant 83 is going to be the target from Chan Dog and Fat Crow, Fossa Kid, and Makos. Fossa Kid misses a shot. Makos is hit again for 377. A couple missed shots on both sides here. Militant 83 is going to continue to get hit, and Makos is down, but so is Militant 83 for the trade. Two tanks down for Team Fear as Comps continues to get hit, and Chan Dog is down for fear. And now on the reload, Dodoma's going to have to back off, which allows him to be some uh, an easy target. Takes a few shells for other people. And now Fat Crow will be the focus as Commander J actually ignores him for Foster Kid. Foster Kid's on the reload. He can't engage against Commander J. Commander J misses a shot. Foster Kid says thanks as he's moving down to the south. We have an overmatch against A. Martin in that south side from external and Warbander. And Warbander misses a shot against A. Martin. Foster Kid Martin. takes a hit. A Warbender has to be very careful. A Martin can deal quite a bit of damage. Oh, never mind. He gets it. He gets it. Okay. He's careful but enough. But it's a trade. Dodoma yeah. makes him pay for it. Dodoma goes over, takes down Fossa Kid. One tank remains. It's external 007. And uh, T32 all alone versus one, two, three RU251s and a 1390. Chances are pretty slim for him. So Fear is now starting to lose a lot of that momentum. I'm not feeling that their attacks are, are working out for them right now. No, Cunningham seem to so have- They are so tilted right now. They yeah. are so tilted. Really? You think they're on oh, tilt? Yeah. Oh yeah, Team Fear right now. Hmm. I mean, the crappy setup, I'm sorry guys, but the crappy setup on the flag cap, I mean, if you're gonna go for the flag cap, make the Cunninghams come to you and watch the approaches coming from the you, railroad you tracks. Can't, you can't cap in the east. It doesn't work anymore. Too many teams know the angles underneath the trains. You, you can't do that. But you can set up to counter those angles. Just I, I feel that they didn't know exactly what to do. No, it's it's not going to work. Uh, Cunningham's can easily defend it. It's They're too good for you to be able to work it. And external goes down. All right, Team Fear, you're still in the lead. You're still in this fight. Take a deep breath, shake it off, and work tighter as a team. Cunningham's, this is how they play. They play this intelligent game, and that's what they did on this battlefield. Yes. I don't know if Team Fear can outmatch them when it comes to that type of coordination, but they cannot match them when it comes to getting in their face. And that's the type of game they have to play right now. That's what I think too. I think Fear needs to get aggressive. Just take it straight to the Cunninghams and defeat them when it comes down to that brawl. Now, Cunninghams, don't underestimate them when it comes to being organized in a fight. They're well, tr they're well practiced. They've been playing with each other since the beginning of the WGL, and at least many of them have. And they've added some members here and there, but they've adopted them very quickly and easily, and they've become a part of that group. I think the Cunninghams, don't underestimate them if you're going to bring it straight to them. But that seems, and I agree too, to be the best strategy to bring. You just don't play around with these cap pressure things. Yeah. Play around with just catching them off guard in transition. Fake something. Just pull something a little sneakier than that. The more traditional strategies we're seeing where you just put a tank on cap, they're not going to work. You just saw it fail. I don't, I don't think they should try it again. I think there's risk you're taking in this, but... Is it not worth it to close this out with a very clean win for three points? The worth, the worth, obviously, is pride, of uh, course. But three good points that put yeah. you good standings, better seating. But the worth is also recognizing what works and quoting Liebestad, learning from your win, and say, hey, this worked against the Cunninghams, who are mm -hmm. technically the number one team in the league. It can work in other instances as well if we adapt it correctly for this scenario. Mm -hmm. Battle number eight.
Potential for a tiebreaker if Cunningham's wins. If not, Team Fear will close the series. Randall, what do we have for tanks? All right, we have two T32s, a 1390, three RU251s, and a 5916 for the Cunninghams. They're on defense in red. Fear, blue. T32, Pershing, two 1390s, RU251, and two M41 Walker Bulldogs. And again, the Cunninghams open with all of their light tanks to the middle, and they're going to screen for their heavies to move up. In the meantime, Fear does not match this. They don't bring the same force to the middle. They'll send Makos, and I'm worried for him because Makos is in an RU251, and he's about to make a loop. Hopefully, he doesn't go up and over. Good. He actually uses the terrain. There's a bit of an extra hill on the south side in about Foxtrot 5. That spot allows you to kind of approach the, the middle of the map and keep some kind of cover. Now, Commander J Ooh, is couple starting... shots. Long range from Warbander and Meadowhawk, they are punishing Commander J. This is exactly the kind of strategy we've seen from a lot of other teams as well. Fear understands that there needs to be a crossfire in the middle. There's two rocks. They represent too much cover. You can put tanks behind them, especially if you camp directly south and try and support, or if you pick left, uh, west or east and only do one of those to cover the approach. Fatcrobe's now pushing towards the north side in his tank. Smackos had peeled back, and now we're seeing movement coming from Team Fear heading over to the west. Fat Crow will continue to be in that spot as externals get to catch up. And so this turns into the potential game of external covering. The tank's moving closer to the north, but look at the Cunninghams defending that section so well. And then you have Militant 83 and his battle buddy in the center section of the railroad tracks. Okay, so... The way this is going to play out, I think, you see how Fear is moving up the 1-2 line right now. We saw this kind of earlier with, uh, I think, Hammer Time Simple Tankers, was it? Where an attack up the one line, passive scout, a Martin in this situation, is going to spot a few tanks, and then we've got a firing line. Meadowhawk leading the charge for this assault group of Team Fear, slowly moving up, trying to find those tanks that were potentially be in the north. Oh, did Dodo's even getting in a better position for this. They're, they're prepared. A. Martin, though, is Whoa, spotted. Oh, A. Martin hits oh. for 316. What happened there? He got himself spotted. And uh, he just barely stuck out of the bush. Wrong time for that. Now, he is going to be stuck behind a small hill. The enemy can simply approach and probably take him whoa, out. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Foster kid! He's in a slight defilade, a yeah. slight low ground, which is going to make firing and hitting his tank actually a little bit difficult because you can really only see his turret and you hope the shell kind of drops into his tank as opposed to just flies up and over like most have thus far. Well, Fosikid is able to dodge three shots in a row, all really close together. Well, it's it's not dodge, it's it's maybe dip or, or maybe duck, du or maybe but duck, it's, it's yeah. not a dive. <laughs> so, no. so it's only those two, gotcha. I think, in this situation, if we want to really classify it. Okay, shots fired towards Foster Kid. He's going to melt. 855. He has three shots left in his 1390. Not a big trade coming from that tank. They knew he was in that section. They already fired towards him. But Meadowhawk's going to fire towards Conflict. And oh. these M41 Bulldogs Actually, Martin, are not to be messed with. If Martin takes fire. Fat Crow and External could take him out. If they do, that will remove that scout from the side of the map and give Fear the ability to take the West. And then from there, push the Cunninghams out of position. It's fantastic for fear if they can get the kill on A. Martin without losing a tank. And there is blind fire coming in at A. Martin. No, wait, he is spotted. What is spotting him so successfully? Uh, he was spotted slightly. Now Milton 83 spotted. Cox uh, okay. is spotted now on the side of I'm, the Cunningham. I'm honestly surprised that, that he keeps peeking out in these little ways that get him spotted because it, it seems like he's getting right into the proper bush. He shouldn't return to this one. It seems like a bad idea because I, I think he's he's going into a spot where blind fire continues oh, to land. Blind fire. Well, that wasn't blind. That was spotted fire hitting Militant 83 from War Banner. Again, another shot. I love this coming from Team Fear. These little shots are weakening the Cunninghams, allowing them to have an overmatch possibility in the south and then move closer to the north. Backrobe and Chandog, though, may cross the railroad tracks. They've, they're doing it. All right, now it looks like they're going to take A. Martin out. As Foster, Foster Kid is taken down. Fatcrobe and Chandok don't land any of their shots against Comps and Militant. Ah, look, they move Meadowhawk around to the west. He's in Echo 1. He's able to fire into conflict, putting pressure on him. But you can see how Cunninghams are staying focused. They've taken down Fatcrobe. Now, finally, Chandok's landing some shots, and Militant 83 goes down. Chandok needs one more hit, or two more, until he starts reloading. And he takes another long shot from conflict. Comps tries to line up a shot against him, but he gets behind cover in time. 
One mm. tank down for the Cunninghams, two tanks down for Team Fear. And now the Cunninghams have the advantage. And they're going to press it. They're sending Dodoma Germ right up the 6-7 line, east side of the tracks. That's going to keep them from being spotted right until the moment where they're going to meet those members of Fear. This surprise attack should give them a little bit of extra time, one extra shell in there, and that could give them victory. But it looks like they're going to turn back with German Dodoma. They know that there's too many tanks there or something. And only a minute and 46 seconds Wait. left. The Cunninghams have the advantage when it comes to time. Warbanner's starting to push forward. He's going to get destroyed by the Cunninghams. Makos and Shandong trying to fire from a distance to to have that tank mean something. But with three tanks, four tanks remaining here against the six still on the battlefield for the Cunninghams, they're going to push up and clean this up. We're going to go to a tiebreaker. Yeah, this is a good comeback from the Cunninghams. You can see how they just, they really got the motivation back. It, you can feel that they're just playing it that much better. There, Dodoma comes in, finishing off a few tanks, gets a second one even. Now he has to reload. Two tanks remain, external Meadowhawk. Comps takes a hit for 221. And then Conflict will be, I guess, sent to go take down Meadowhawk. But Comps uh, can't take much more than this. And Militant takes a hit to the front. But that shot does bounce. It's all a matter of time, 50 seconds. So, Randall, I really liked how these M41 Bulldogs were getting these long-range shots and significantly reducing these hit points of these tanks. They just couldn't finish out a lot of those no, kills. No, they though. couldn't. They couldn't. Uh, Cunningham's did a good job of, of spreading out the hit points. And when two tanks um, wear into the center of the railroad tracks, they continue to fire into the T-32s, and they had missed or bounced at least three shots. And one of their T uh, Pershing got destroyed because of it. Yeah. And so that trade for two tanks to nothing is was the downfall of Team Fear in that battle. And now we go to a tiebreaker. And uh, the tiebreaker will be on Cliff once again between these two teams. You know, you did talk about Meadowhawk, 2,195 damage in this battle, three kills as well, picking up the only kills. And here's, the, here's, the, here's the moment I'm talking about. Fat Crow moves in, he doesn't even do any damage. He gets annihilated in a matter of about 15 seconds. And then Shandog starts to put shots into Militant 83, but he's going to continue to take fire. There is no positive trade at all for Team Fear in that scenario. All right, well, right now, Cunningham's choose defense on our tiebreaker, which is going to be Cliff. And so uh, we're, we're heading back to Cliff. We're going back to Cliff. Going back now, to Cliff. Now, I, I, again, I don't mean to harp too harshly on Team Fear, but this is a team that's going to be playing through the playoffs, a team that is possibly going to San Francisco. Yes. And if you have these type of mistakes that happen, it's the same thing as when Pete Carroll decided to pass instead of run the ball. Don't bring Seattle it up. Seahawks. Hey, look, dude, that's painful. Don't bring up those <laughs> kinds of memories. You're not supposed to do that. But you have to learn. You have to learn from those events. You have to learn from those scenarios. And hopefully Team Fear will take this as a, if you're in a position, 4-1 to one victory, do not send one of your tanks to scout halfway through the map if you can hang back and defend. I know it's a tough call sometimes, but it's those type of calculated risk and understanding of what's at stake. You cannot allow the temptation for those mistakes to happen. Look, just like Pete Carroll, <laughs> and that whole situation, yeah. what we're running into maybe, and what I suspect that both of them share, is that it's the end of the game, and they're getting exhausted. Yes. They're losing their it's focus. the end of the day. They're starting to slip up, and guess what? They, they're starting to make some pretty questionable we are calls. all human in the end. Exactly. And with that, I will accept the get off my high horse <laughs> <laughs> scenario. I yes. apologize, all everybody. Right. I so apologize. So timeout, by the way, was called by fear. What better time to use it than right towards the end when you need to catch a breath because you've just gone on a three-battle losing streak. And uh, it's it'll be just a minute, you know. We'll see if we can, uh, if Fear's going to be able to come out of this timeout refreshed, a little healthier, a little bit less crazy strategies. Yeah. Well, I mean, T49 making a reappearance here, definitely. Of it course. worked totally in favor of Team Fear. And I... <laughs> Uh, they still have the chance. Attacker, defense, not that much of a difference compared to other maps yes. uh, on Cliff. So, so you know, hope is still kindled for that team. I mean, we could see two T-49s. I we mean, could. That's, we could see 100% more T-49s than we <laughs> usually see. And that, that could be the secret weapon of fear. But it could also be the secret weapon of the Cunninghams. Yeah. I don't know what. I think that someone's going to bring something a little different. I don't think standard strategies are going to work here. 
Maybe they do. Maybe that's what we see. We see a standard battle, and I'm There's wrong. one guarantee right now, Randall. What? And that is this is the last battle Look, of the regular season I for season five. Fear's pulling something crazy. That's I my call, I want to see. I want to see something crazy coming from Team Fear. Battle number nine, tiebreaker. The Cunninghams versus Fear. What do we have for tanks? All right, we've got a 1393 RU251s, T49 and two M41 Walker Bulldogs. Dodoma will be playing the T49 for the Cunninghams on defense. Fear. Two 1390s, two RU two five ones, Chan Dog in the T forty nine, and two M forty one Walker Bulldogs, Meadowhawk and Warbender, who have continually been playing, I think, excellently in those M forty ones. I think they're doing very well. Movement coming from Team Fear is a split. Warbender and his teammate will be heading towards the north, while the rest of Fear will head towards the middle of the map. Cunningham's heading towards the mid as Wally Martin staying behind. And where will the T-49s go? Both of them right to the traditional spots. What's coming out of fear? What's different here? They're holding back, actually, Yeah, a they're, bit. they're holding back. They're not going into the center section. They're not trying to surprise Tatoma. But at the same time, they're sending Warbander off. It's Warbander and, uh, and Meadowhawk to the west, and they are spotted, by the way, which is that a Martin able to accomplish that? I think it, mm, I don't think it is. He's too low. It must be. I've returned to A Martin. Can't tell who that must be. I know D Dodoma continues to get spotted, but there's no way he has the angle. It could be Militant Commander J. Uh, I doubt it could be comps. It it's possible. Fat but Crow hit for 239. Oh, mm. big shot from the T49. Does not connect. That's going to leave a little bit of a window it, he for was, Team Fear to engage. He was moving while he fired it. Yeah. I mean, chances are you're going to miss if you're. You're looking for Especially that kind of a connection. If, you're, if your reticle is as big as the sun in the sky when you're trying to fire from the T-49, that's likely to happen. Uh, and Chandog moves out trying to catch Dodoma right before he would be reloaded, but uh, a little bit late on that one. And Comp's germ can't, can't quite get the connection. So now we're at a bit of an impasse here. It's, no one's able to get a huge lead. We've got minimal damage dealt on either side. Dodoma's taking a shell next to Fat Crow and, and, and Warbender from Fear. So... Both teams need to look for something. And I think if you see Fat Crobe and Foster Kid moving off to the southeast, while Makos is kind of posturing up, take a look at the minimap where it is currently. You're going to be seeing a, it looks like a hit squad moving in, and they'll hit on Trireme. You'll have the same kind of pressure right onto Commander J. And then from there, I, I think Comps and Germ may come into this, but A. Martin's going to have to struggle to get back into the fight, and that, that'll that give, I think, Fear a little advantage in this situation. Foster Kid and Fat Crobe slowly moving up on the east side, looking for that opening. Trireme's the target they're looking for. He's meant to be here to spot this and warn the rest of his team about it. Fat Crobe, Chandog are spotted, and that's an indication that'll pull A. Martin, giving him a little bit extra time to get back with the rest of the team, but the trigger is pulled, externals moving, Meadowhawk, Warbender all moving. From the west, you have a huge group trying to take Dodoma out before he can engage on Jandog. But he moves forward, avoiding this. So he can just stay on that fight. In the meantime, what's happening in the northeast? Trireme is being contested with on uh, Fat Crow and Foster Kid, but they can't get the kill yet. They're taking a while to take him down. Fat Crow finally gets the kill. But Germ's going to move in, and Fat Crow misses a shot against Germ. Foster Kid can't get it. Well, he gets one shot against Germ, and he bounces a shot from Comps. However, he has only one shell left, and he misses. And now Foster Kid is going to have to move as quickly as he can to get away from Comps, but he's fallen back <laughs> into the mountain, and Comps has him pinned. Comps is not going to let Foster Kid move from this area. He gets another clean shot into Foster Kid and Comps will take this victory. In the meantime, Dodoma was able to pick up a kill, leaving, and Chandog was not able to get a one shot against Dodoma. Now the two of them square off. A Martin, miraculously alive, Dodoma gets the reload before Chandog and finishes him off. This is huge for the Cunninghams. Makos, last tank left alive for Team Fear. The Cunninghams displaying one of the biggest comebacks we have seen in the WGLNA Season 5. Still on the run. Germ gets a nice shot. Commander J is plowing into Makos, and that's it. The Cunninghams win 5-4 to four in the tiebreaker, and that does it for the regular season, ladies and gentlemen, for Season 5. Well done by the Cunninghams. They locked it in, and they got the momentum they needed to get the victory. Exactly. Right at the beginning of the series, they pick up a win, right? From then on, four losses in a row. They can't string one together on Cliff. They just can't.
fear gets momentum, they roll with it. It seems like something that, that really works for them. The moment they can get some momentum, they, they, they look so much better and they continue with it. Maybe a loss here or there won't hurt them, but after two losses in a row, it fear started to feel much less potent. And I think that, as you suspected, Josh, it may have come down to going on tilt, not being able to... I could see it. I could focus. see it. And I it, could see it in their movements. I could see it in their shot patterns. They were broke. Like they, I mean, they were broken. And I, so that is a really tough place to be as a team mm -hmm. because now you have to focus energy on, okay, how do we get out of this rut? How do we get out of this situation? I think that it may not have been up to that level. I feel that the effect can be that drastic. Well, not it, it's not that broken. It's you're tired. You're losing focus. Your guys have gotten a little overconfident mm -hmm. at one point and misjudged. You know, when you when you win a few times and you feel like sure, you're invincible, sure. and then you walk into another M game and maybe you think, maybe the adjective I should use is that they were cracked. Not necessarily broken, but something was n something shifted that was not allowing them to play as we've seen them play before. A little fatigued, maybe. I who isn't fatigued after eight weeks of playing World of Tanks? I mean, I, I totally I pretty good. Yeah, I totally can. <laughs> Empathize with them, mm -hmm. and honestly, I'm kind of glad this happened because it allows that to be exhausted from their system. Hopefully, as they fight their way through the playoffs and through to the finals, if they can make it that far, uh, a loss being exhausted through their system or acting in that way as a team before going into the playoffs. acting that way as a team. You're right. Actually, that's great. Yeah. You you bring up a great valid point, which is before you're into that point where you, if, when you lose you're done you can afford a loss here you can afford to sit there listen to the way you guys were on comms listen to the way you guys worked as a team and be like wow we made a lot of mistakes and we can recognize and identify what led to those mistakes and then of course bring about change with that many teams have trouble with that and that's that's a big problem because it's it's a huge interpersonal issue kind of a thing it's teamwork and and all of these really delicate things that some some of us kind of struggle with as gamers you know? Yeah, well, definitely, and that and any human has to deal with fatigue in certain ways, but especially when you play a team game. I mean, when your success rides on the performance of somebody else on a team, that's a really tough place to be. And part of that exhaustion be, could be coming from the disappointment of, dude, you made a mistake and now we lost, and mm -hmm. now we have to do this to recover your mistake, and now we lost that battle, and that really builds. And it takes the strength of a leader, a commander, to say, hey, knock it off. Okay. This is not helping anybody and if you get through that before you make it into the big final matches through the playoffs and then in the finals it's better because it just is the process is better it's almost like the dress rehearsal that we talked about on tuesday yes. having kind of a lot of mistakes during the dress rehearsal is a lot better mm. compared to having a lot of mistakes in the actual show i think a lot of teams will talk about that too in practice they'll lose lose lose, lose. i remember always losing I've, I've, I've always been horrible in practice kind of a thing i know a lot of players also talk about it uh, I know Simp has had done that in the past kind of thing, where they just don't win in practice. They don't seem really dangerous or something. But then they'd show up in a in a in a regular match, a season match, and it would be brutal. They'd be efficient. They'd be right on target. And it was something about practicing and and continually losing, where you learn exactly all, where you work out all of the weaknesses you have. You get to find every little weak point, every little thing that's going to set a player off, or every little thing that's going to set. Your team on tilt, and you and you identify those, and you get rid of them. You deal with the fact. Definitely. You build healthy habits. Definitely. And I'm I'm glad that both these teams put their hearts into this matchup because in the end, as we said before, what matters the most is Team Fierce placement in seeding for playoffs. Cunningham's win lose tiebreaker, electrical storm, whatever. If they're still going to San Francisco. Electrical storm. I mean, if if a bunch of their players lost power and they couldn't play anymore. I mean, if a lot of their players like, what if like all of Canada lost power? It gets cold up there. <laughs> People still have the technology to to burn wood to start fires. It's I think they'll be okay. It's really cold up it there sometimes. It can definitely get very cold. It, it may not be as cold. cold as it gets, but like I'm pretty sure it gets really cold up there. Like you have to wear real clothes that are warm, not like no, a these jacket. Cali these California clothes that we yeah, wear. Yeah, I come yeah. from like the other place in the United States that's southern and hot gone to the other one they're both hot but i've never been to the places that are really cold so i'm afraid of them because they're different and i don't like change <laughs> well i was in uh, a number of ice storms in kansas where even the trees were frozen in over a thick uh an inch thick uh, of ice and it, it can be very crazy mm -hmm. but yeah the reason uh that you have to be acclimated for any type of disasters any type of weather weather as part of any type of sports league esports <laughs> it's more of 
hey, make sure we have internet, make sure we have electricity, we're good to go. And we're going to have those things, obviously, yeah. in San Francisco at the Folsom Street Foundry. I mean, we wouldn't. That's kind of funny to think of. But anyway, full, actually, Folsom, yeah. So that venue is so free, is so cool. Did you, you see the uh, paintings on the walls inside the the loading yeah. dock? Yeah, when they were when they were doing uh, uh, the setup for everything. Yeah. It's really a wonderful place for us to host the finals happening March 15th. But first of all, Brandon, let's go over tonight, uh, today's matches. The scores for the entire series. Roulette 5-0 against RBIS. Simp 5-4 against Fun Gaming in a tiebreaker. Civil Takers takes down Hammer Time 5-3. Cunningham's 5-4 against Fear in the end in that tiebreaker. Not bad. Looking at the off-stream matches for the results, we have Simply Irresistible winning against Penguin Mafia 5-0. I Love Lamp 5-2 against Timed Out. Top tier 5-2 against Victoria's Secret, then Elevate 5-2. A lot of 5-2s tonight. It seems to be happening Double. a lot recently. It's just a trend. Yeah. I guess momentum goes that way. Let's take a look at the standings overall. The final standings for Season 5. All right, we have the Cunninghams leading the way with 36. Behind them, Simp in second with 33. These are the two teams that will be automatically seeded into our finals at Folsom. Simple Tankers with 30 will be tied with Elevate. We'll be sure to figure out what the result of the tiebreaker is. We also have a tiebreaker Hammer Time and I Love Lamp at 29. And then in seventh, Fear with 27 points. Simply Irresistible with 24. And the end of the standings, we have Roulette with 22 points at nine and top tier with the tiebreaker of RBIS and Fun Gaming for three, followed by Noble, Victoria's Secret, Timed Out, and Penguin Mafia. So we have to confer with our admin who's going to the playoffs between top tier RBIS and Fun Gaming. So top tier is the one going to the playoffs. RBIS and Fun Gaming, because of the head-to-head, -head, are not going to playoffs. So that's it. We know who's going. Roulette and top tier barely make it through. And there's our bracket. Simp and the Cunninghams are automatically seated into the finals in San Francisco, where the first two semifinals will be held. And there we have our eight remaining teams, Randall, starting with Simple Tankers and Top Tier. Yes, Simple Tankers and Top Tier is battle one. Number two, I Love Lamp against Fear. Oh, that's perfect. That's just... <laughs> the rematch. That's, that's revenge match right there. Elevate versus Roulette. That, that's also, oh gosh, who, we couldn't have, okay, I'm moving on. <laughs> Hammer Time versus Simply Irresistible. I, I'm really going to enjoy these. I think that's it's nice. Uh, the top tier, Simple Tankers, is something where I feel like top tier is going to get a chance to really redeem themselves. Yeah, and those matches will be happening live on Tuesday night. 4.45 will be our pregame show. 5 o'clock will start the first match. And then after that, we'll go into the Tuesday matches, which will be two matches to determine who will be the two teams joining Cunningham's and Simp. And there you have it. Simple Tankers and top tier will start the night, followed by I Love Lamp and Fear, Elevate Roulette, and Hammer Time versus Simply Irresistible. It's the best of the best from Season 5 in North America. Yeah, and we've got a matchup with Elevate, I Love Lamp, that kind of a thing. Two teams that I was I was almost expecting would somehow find a seating that would get them both to Folsom, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for this. It's either I'm, one or the other, wow. single elimination. And we, again, want to heavily emphasize, you want to make it up to San Francisco. March 15th, that's going to be a Sunday for the finals, $171,000 will be awarded to the top teams in North America at a beautiful location in downtown San Francisco. For more information, you definitely want to check our page on Facebook, facebook.com slash WGLNA, and also follow our Twitter as we release more info and maybe a little bit more of the activities and goodies we'll be giving out for the people that do show up. There's always a few fun secrets in store at Folsom. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, final thoughts, Randall? I... I'm satisfied with these matches, and I'm satisfied <laughs> with this season. Well, we saw a lot of ups and downs for all these different teams, and even in the microcosm of Team Fear of the, what are you doing into, okay, okay, you guys will be all right. You're going to make it through the playoffs. I'm sure a lot of fans had that type of emotional journey throughout this entire season. But now that the regular season is over, it's time for us to prepare for the playoffs so that we can crown a champion on March 15th. Thanks so much for being with us during our regular season. We'll see you Tuesday at 445 Pacific time. Until then, good night and good game.